I think of Timmy every day. Here, he made this arch wider and put in all the cabinets. And here's my friend Ann. Oh, I can't see anything. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I'm here. <laughs> Ann came all the way from Kinderhook, New York to be with us. Yes. Peaceful Tomorrows was meeting at Adele's place. In the beginning, the organization of bereaved families of 9-11 victims was derided for its message of goodwill and peace. In those days, many U.S. Americans were focused on retribution and revenge. Colleen is a spokesperson for the group. On September 11th, Anne had been at home near the phone all morning, except for the brief period when the attacks occurred. I walked home thinking about that son and the other son and the two daughters who were in New York City and wondering what I was going to find when I got back to my house. And when I did get there, there were messages on my answering machine. In the very short time I had left, all of this disaster had occurred. And one message was from my son, and he was saying goodbye. And he was saying that he loved. He said, I love you. But I knew it was a plural you. <laughs> it was saying he loved everyone he was leaving. Anne's daughter was also in the World Trade Center that day. But late in the afternoon, she received word that her daughter had survived. So in that very slice of time, I experienced the worst grief a person could ever experience and the most joy because one child was living and one child was dead. And I thought the danger here will be to fall in love with death and you mustn't let it happen. This is not new in humanity's history. This is what happens over and over again. People are killed by others who say it's okay to kill them and not only that, God is happy if you kill them. So I thought that's going to be what I'll live for, to embrace the joy and also to say this is a very wrong thing for people to do. Whatever ham I had made. Was he defending? The thing that, that bound us all together then and still does today is the loss and that, that is the common ground between all of the groups and all of the family members which is a um, is very intense bond. We've learned a lot in the past 10 years. I don't, you know, I don't want to say that we were right about everything. We certainly weren't. A lot happened around Iraq, and there were no weapons of mass destruction, and thousands of soldiers died, and hundreds of thousands of Iraqi civilians died. And you look at that, and what did that have to do with 9-11? Nothing. And look at a society that we destroyed. So there's this concrete example, unfortunately, that Peaceful Tomorrow's can point to and say that we we can't do this again. We have to find a better way. Or we're too smart. We're too, you know, we have too much. We're too wealthy. We have all these other tools at our disposal. Why are we relying on military response all the time? We have so much other, um, so many other options. Out and about with Adele. We're going to the home of Bruce Wallace, who's a member of Peaceful Tomorrows. He lost his nephew on 9-11, and he started a project called One-to-One -One Contact, which um, connected high school students in Brooklyn with high school students in Baghdad. Bruce lives in Bay Ridge, a typical Brooklyn neighborhood. We were warmly received. Bruce is a retired teacher. Bruce! He's from a Jewish family, but in the period after the attacks, he eventually made the decision to convert to Islam. I wanted to talk to you about updating Peaceful Tomorrows, about the activities of one-to-one -one contact, because I haven't been doing it for months. Bruce showed us photos from the students in Baghdad, snapshots from everyday life. 
One-to-one -one contact uh, originally was about connecting Iraqi students with American students. Um, the idea behind it was if young people are talking to each other about music and food and girlfriends and boyfriends, then it would be much harder for them to throw bombs at each other. A very simplistic idea. Uh, but what happened was these young people became friends. There are many uh, members of Peaceful Tomorrows who have individual projects that they're engaged in. And Bruce has been uh, very generous in sharing his project with Peaceful Tomorrows, uh, especially the one that has, um, in which he has brought people from Iraq to the United States. Um, and quite a few members of Peaceful Tomorrows have contributed money to help these people get settled in when they get here um, in terms of finding a place to live, um, clothing uh, for the children. Bruce's nephew, Mitch, who died during the attack as a voluntary first responder. Soon after, Bruce converted to Islam. After 9-11, I started working with Iraqis and met many, many Muslims. Um, started visiting mosques in my uh, neighborhood here and uh, became very much in love with uh, the peaceful messages of the book and the peaceful lives of the people who follow Islam. But there was an anti-Muslim uh, backlash. There was a tremendous backlash. I think now maybe it's even worse in America. Why has it got worse? It's gotten worse because the media got behind it and it was uh, the media was in love with the trouble that it stirred up and so it exaggerated things that people said uh, especially in media outlets like Fox News which were so willing to let people lie uh, on, in public Bruce showed Adele his latest project he regularly gives lectures at schools and churches about the dramatic consequences of war for the civilian population in Iraq. He's been learning Arabic and at the time of our meeting was busy preparing a trip to see the hotspots in Iraq for himself. We met up with Talat again. She wanted to show us her place of worship. This is my local mosque where I come during Ramadan especially because it's a holy month, so I come here more often during Ramadan and sometimes on uh, Fridays and a couple of weekends if I uh, have some uh, issue at stake to in educate the mosque over here. And Asalaamu As Alaikum. I just said Asalaamu Alaikum, that's all I'm recording for this. <laughs> You need official permission, the assistant to the imam demanded. Any objection? Why are you objecting to it? It's my house too. It's, it's, it's God's house. It's my house too. I'm a Muslim. But this is your property. You have to get the, get the person to speak. I, I tend to disagree with you. We have nothing to hide at a mosque, and I don't think you should have any, uh, any issues with it. Okay. Thank you. You know, I'm saying this kind of reaction would throw anybody off. I mean, I'm, I'm upset why he questioned, why is he questioning me? You know, it's, I have a right to be over here to worship. In the meantime, the assistant had called the imam and passed his cell phone over to Talat. He was very defensive, which is not right for us as Muslims living here. Even the imam's intervention couldn't solve the dispute. We were refused permission to film in the mosque. The American Muslims are feeling very much threatened. Whenever I've come here, especially on Fridays, I always see two uh, tall white men standing, wearing their long, you know, trench coat, standing right here outside the mosque and at the gate. Not going inside, but standing out at the gate and keeping an eye and watching. So that generates more fear and phobia uh, for the people who are in this mosque, you know, praying at that time. You have any question? Come on right in and uh, ask questions. 
but to stand outside it's very intimidating so there needs to be more collaboration and dialogue on both ends but yes you know the american muslims are feeling very much threatened a last visit to talat's home after the death of her husband and son salman talat took up painting in bright colors she paints to ease the pain it's a way for her to work things through and to take her mind off them. The main concerns are definitely that we are not responsible for uh, what happened that day and we should not be held accountable or responsible for the act of foreign criminals, foreign terrorists. And uh, we have the same rights as any other uh, faith-based community in America. And we paid the dues and we are loyal citizens, you know, law-abiding citizens. There are people, you know, who have fears because for whatever reason, uh, the Americans came to know Islam in a very, you know, a violent fashion. And if you haven't heard about a faith and the only way you were introduced to it is through killing and violence, you know, of course you would be angry. So the best way is, you know, to talk to them, you know, uh, and present myself as I am a Muslim also. I'm American, but I'm a Muslim. And they talk, they, they still have anger, but once they learn that I lost my son at the Twin Towers, then they have more empathy and then their fears seem to start, you know, dispelling, coming down a little bit. And that's what, we you know, that's the only way to fight ignorance. This is ignorance. On our last day, we said goodbye to Talat and drove with Adele to Coney Island. Our conversation came to a halt when we saw a group of firefighters at an accident scene. A short while later, we met up with Bruce. He wanted Adele to join him for a first look at a memorial for the firefighters from Brooklyn. They wanted to see if his nephew Mitch, the emergency medical technician, had been named as well. As it turned out, the memorial held a surprise in store for both of them. Adele discovered a picture of her son Timothy. Here, the firefighters from Queens, as well as Brooklyn, and the EMTs have all been individually honored. It does come as a surprise. The website said they only had the firefighters from Brooklyn. So um, I'm really happy to see that uh, it's both Timothy's name as a firefighter and his picture. That's a really nice picture of Timmy. I've never seen it before. How much does that mean to you? A great deal. That means the world to me.